Hi, welcome to another Option Market Visual Show. Today I have uh, SK joining from Singapore. And as you know, the Option Market Visual Show is primarily designed to bring real traders uh, to you to share you know, what worked for them, what did not work for them. And hopefully through these sharings, you will be able to pick up some insights that might make a difference in your trading. That's the whole objective here. If you do have certain topics, if you would like me to interview someone else as well, please feel free to drop me an email at supportedoptionpundit.com and we'll be happy to reach out even those authors, traders, and et cetera, and bring them to this show to, to share um, you know, their wisdom with you all. So SK, welcome to the show. I'm so glad to have you here. Hi, Manaj. Thank you for having me to the show. SK, would you share a little bit about yourself? What do you do? And when did you start options trading and why you started options trading? Okay, uh, myself, uh, actually, I am a business owner myself. I am doing in uh, construction equipment, dealing mainly on equipment. We trade uh, of equipment. However, the uh, business is doing quite hard right now. As we know that Singapore is already a developed country, and a lot of the machineries they are using will be more on maintenance jobs. So the business is quite stagnant. Plus, moreover, recent years after COVID, business is not doing so well. So this is basically what I do for a living, day to day, day in, day out. Then I started to pick up my options trading in the year, very first time is 2008. However, back then I was going through the causes, but I didn't get any results, which I gave up on. I gave up on the whole investment world. It is only after 10 years later, 2018, I started to come back to this industry and to end off my skepticism because I was constantly being, uh, being, being shown advertisement of investment and being, uh, being a skeptical person before. So I tried multiple times of attending two seminars before I decided to join. My first uh, investment seminar is actually from value investing. After from value investing, I actually follow up with uh, options trading because um, I want to get more well-rounded about what am I dealing with in stock market to get more uh, tools and understand on how to trade and how to invest. That's why I participated in courses after courses, which is uh, a lot of learnings. So it doesn't come uh, uh, as a very sweet, I wouldn't say it's a sweet deal or a bit of roses. So when I joined Value Investings, it is always been made look simple. However, after dealing with the Dealing with the learning is a lot of hard work behind. And it is from the hard work that I started to realize the reason on why 2008 I failed. I failed is because I was looking for fast money. I failed is because I was eager for success. I failed is because I did not really participate fully in learning. So these are my key takeaway for it take me 10 years to understand the real problems about myself. And from there, I actually put down more more efforts and more time to actually find good causes and good people and good coaches to guide me along with my uh, trading journey. So that's why here I am with Manoj. <laughs> that's and very interesting. I, so when did you start with Option Pundit, SK? I started with Option Pundit in uh, this year, 2021, which is at uh, February. This February 2021. The, so it's about 10 months roughly. That is about 10 months. So eight months, actually. Eight months since yeah, February, right. because we are recording this uh, during the month of October. That's when we are talking. So um, I understand that, you know, you start in 2008, then you had, you, you did not succeed and you were frustrated in a way and you decided to quit. Then 10 years later, you picked it up again. You started with value investing and then you deep dive into trading as well. And then you finally ended up at Option Pundit in February 2021. So could you give us an idea? How have you been, um, were you been, have you been profitable since 2000, sorry, February 2021 and now in about 10 months? Could you give us an idea how much profit have you generated if you are profitable since then? Yes, uh, I've generated roughly about 150,000 after joining Option Pundit. Uh, it was actually a lot of learning that I actually, uh, gain the growth over here and main thing is that during ocean pundits i joined the i joined the inner circle and then i get uh, my as my coach 
from the coach sessions, uh, a lot of things is being learned through mindset, shifting our mindset, changing so in of, a way, uh, strategy. Yeah. So sorry for interrupting. So in a way, you took all the trainings. You went through the OSM trainings, then you went to Condor's training, and then you finally also, you know, decided to go full on, and you were part of Inner Circle Mastermind as well. Yes. Is it correct? Correct. Yeah, so correct. how was it like, you know, from a from an education perspective and how it changed your thought process compared to maybe what you experienced in 2008? OK, the experience is very different. In 2008, I was alone. I don't have really networks and whatever networks that is being provided back then is all subscription based and then they required us to um, pay monthly subscriptions to follow up. Back then, because my earning power is not so high, so to me, like spending money on networking is like a so-called waste of money, waste of money. So I decided to do it on my own. However, doing it on my own have a consequences. The consequences is lack of support. And that's what makes me not able to achieve results. And when I joined Value Investings, I started to learn more things about uh about the network effects that have with uh different traders or different people who learn together find the like-minded and that's where i met uh, uh sky which is also in opic and then we were actually becoming a, a, like a like a so-called buddy so we talk more often in markets we share more often in trading strategy and sky was the first one who uh started off with opic he was the one who also brought me to OPIC and introduced it to me. Uh, I was once skeptical in the past. However, I decided to change my mindset hmm. after I, I learned from people that is around me. I said that there's nothing more worth to pay for a sum to get yourself trained and learn. That's the value that I will be getting back in, uh, in return. Yeah. Uh, it has been a run because I joined Value Investing. And then there was a there was a good win in 2020. However, I did not take my 2020 good win as a win because going through with the market together with uh, like Sky, we all understand that 2020 is like majority is pure luck because mm -hmm. a lot of people with basic knowledge of investment by any companies at that time were sure get the results. What me and Sky is looking for is consistency in results. We want constant returns and not just a one-time off event. That's yeah. why we decided to explore more into uh, other trainers. That's where the two of us bump into Ocean Pandit causes. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. Um, and I think what you mentioned, uh, SK, is so true about any business, in fact. If you want to start a business, you want to connect with the, with the right like-minded people, you want to connect with good business mentors, you want to connect with... Uh, maybe industry circles as well so you know deep insights about the industry the trends the changes which are taking place and by being part of this option pundit community itself you had you you found good traders or you found buddies who were trading with real money that's the key that you found people who were trading with the real money so when they talk about they talk about their failures they talk about success and the ideas were were crossing through and i think um, this is this is really key as well, because in our mind, we might think it's a great trade. But when you just run through that trade idea with one of your trading buddy as well and say, hey, you know, you have not really done your preparation. So even just that a little bit of tightening the rope can also save you from a dangerous trade that we otherwise might be just uh, venturing into. So in since then, you know, in last 10 months, you have produced $150,000 profit on your portfolio. Could you share with us, with the listeners of this show, what worked for you and what did not work for you? Okay, basically what works for me is um, selling secure puts and then I'm doing my iron condos trades. At first, I wasn't very sure what works for me when I first joined OPIC, but after reading through the seniors on what they are doing about the mindset shifting about things that have been saying that you you don't know what you don't know which is very true and then 
thinking about how risk management is very important and about position sizing, it all give me a idea on how to restructure my portfolio. My first step is to restructure my portfolio. Instead of having 20, 30 or multiple stocks, which I can't keep track of everything, I started to streamline. Uh, I streamline until to the to, to my capacity, which I can actually handle. Maybe it will be as strict as about maybe only eight stocks in the portfolio. Next thing is uh, I redeploy my cash. I do selling of uh, secure puts. I did a lot of uh, selling of puts. So of course, there's a strategies behind in selling the puts to give me the mindset. First of all, the mindset is having a fundamentally good company, which I know. I'm doing stocks that is I have done before. So I know that uh, I'm quite okay to own the stock for certain times before selling it away. So give, this gives me a peaceful mindset with a cash capital behind to earn that small little percentage per month, which will be, become a good compounding uh, compounding effects if you yeah. do it for constant a few months. A lot of people uh, like my met sometimes they wanted high gain. However, after I find that actually slow compounding effects through money collection of small percentage of premiums will actually give you good results. This I did not know until I pull out my account statements. Second of all, I did my account statements uh, checks. This is one thing that I, I would really emphasize to do it because once you pull out your, uh, my account statements, I started to dissect individual strategy yeah. with my with my uh what, the time of entry how much i earn like selling puts buying call buying shares uh vertical spreads i actually have a spreadsheet to actually label them and allocate those trades to the to the strategy itself that is when i found out that a lot of times i did badly for my short trades mm. and a lot of times i did badly for my uh, lead calls Hmm. So these are the two things that I found out. So I actually stopped doing them because I know if I continue to do so, I'm just burning off my money. However, I did fantastically well with my selling of secure puts, selling of secure calls. And then um, I'm also doing well with my iron corner right now. So these are the things that um, helped me gain back my gain back the, the gains that I have, which is uh, 150,000 in, in total. In Iron Condor, what I would suggest is that also have a spreadsheet down there to make sure you know, I know what is my trade. Mm. So I will actually actually keep tracks of my, my Iron Condor trade journals and my account statements tightly for these two. So this, these are the things that makes me, uh, makes me able to earn the 150,000 consistently actually is after months after months. This is fantastic. So if I were to summarize for the viewers, you know, who are watching it, basically, you know, he had to restructure the entire portfolio. He looked through what he should be trading, what he should not be trading. And he brought it down to a number that he can, he can uh, manage. And then he looked through and made it more database. He looked at all the trades that he did uh, and divide that into multiple strategies and see what strategy he's good at and what strategy he's not good at so that he can pick up on strength and then according to his lifestyle, according to the work he does full time, he zeroed in onto certain strategy, which has been working very well for him. And then he started to allocate more capital. In fact, I remember our private coaching sessions, SK, when we reviewed how money was being allocated and how we can redeploy the capital and generate a similar kind of returns. And uh, so redeployment of the capital, making it a goal-oriented um, strategy-based system and uh, achieving, you know, let the power of compounding work, making sure that you only trade what you are good at and you know very well. And that's what really has worked phenomenally well for SK. And I'm very, very proud. Achieving $150,000 in, in uh, those 10 months is, is not a small feat. And I also remember when you join in, in the beginning, how confused in a way you were, you know, how to figure out how to make those things, how to trade well and then trying to figure out some sense of trying to make out some sense of all the conversation going on especially on telegram chats and etc and absorbing it bit by bit bit by bit 
But one of the things which I also may want to add that worked for you, probably you may realize it afterwards, is that you've been very engaged. You've been very participative right from the beginning. If you didn't know, you asked. If you, if you uh, were not very clear, you asked. And then every time I gave you homework, you were right there. You took your homework seriously. You documented your journals. You documented your learnings. And uh, you made commitments. And you said that, okay, if I say to you, Manoj, that I'm not going to do this, I will not do this. And you showed that through your action. So I think being, uh, being disciplined and being totally engaged also worked in your favor. I just wanted to add that point also. Now, this is good, what worked for you. But, you know, as there will be listeners who might also be doing this, but they might also be doing something which may not have worked. So could you share a few things as well? What did not work for you, SK? Okay. The things that don't really work for me is that um, I tend to join, like goes into like um, long lead course because of uh, maybe finding that, oh, this is a good stock that I know. I thought I know, and then I thought the market pullback is there, and then I joined to the long lead course. However, after maybe a few months, I can see stagnations and then uh, the, the options just keep on decaying. Then um, the emotions came up and I decided to cut loss. So it's always about the time of when I cut loss, the thing starts to turn around. This is one thing is the emotional stress and troubling oneself after seeing uh, months of rates with the option contracts and decided to take the pain. This is one part that actually makes me lost the money. Mm. Second part is short trades. Short trades is because I couldn't be 24 seven sitting down here looking at the computers at the trade markets because I have to handle with my kids. And then uh, every night time they are going to sleep, my wife will take care of one, I'll take care of one. So it's my lifestyles that is unable for me to be down there at the trade desk to do decision fast, to close off intraday trades, or sometimes even short, short term uh, call options. And what actually makes me work is that when I sell a uh, secure puts, secure puts is actually like, it's a one month, one month base. And I already know that I'm okay to get a sign. It is the certainty that I have that makes me feel comfortable to go through the trades. It is uncertainty that I have that makes me always lose the trades. Mm, mm. So this is generous summarized for you all. And I think is that why I also mm. participated uh, heavily into iron contours is that I find that this is a very predictable in a way trades that if one have structured it correctly and plan it correctly and do it with care. Because I have times to read through uh, articles. As a business owner myself, I have to run through articles myself also. So it's just like, while well, I'm working, I'm also investing. <laughs> it, yeah. it doesn't conflict my time, time management. So it helps me to understand the general market by reading, reading through papers that I, I need to read through. Anyway, I need to read through them. So managing of iron condors and managing of things that is more certain for me makes me feel the comfortability and the emotion secure down here to take the trades. Like for some, some of the strategy, I also own stocks. I buy stocks that which I really intend to keep for five, 10 years. It's not those stocks that I will just YOLO away. So I must be very sure that I wanted the stocks. Those are the, the, the few things that uh, works for me. It's actually basically about certainty, game plan, and knowing in advance planning in the head that makes me feel comfortable with the trades. So looking at it, um, uncertainty is what really um, did not work for you. And the other part was the short-term natures of the. And I think it, <clears throat> it part, partly boils down to your lifestyle as well, because you are a business person. So you focus more on uh, looking at the business relatively longer term kind of things. Now, for those who do not know, uh, Iron Condor, is a, is a strategy which is built using the bear call spreads and the bull put spreads and you combine the two, it converts into iron condor. Now it may sound pretty simple, but you should really understand how iron condors work. And as I like to say, as you know, an option funded, almost everybody knows in the community that condors are beautiful, but it's brutal, which means that you really, really need to understand how iron condors are trading. But if you are not looking for very active trading, you're looking for a relatively moderate kind of time commitment and engagement, then Iron Condor can serve as a good strategy and on top of its positive cash flow. 
Then another strategy that SK mentioned is about selling puts. Now selling puts, there is no rocket science behind it. You need to really understand though that selling put is nothing but just selling put options and you collect premium for it. But there is a lot more that goes inside on what companies to sell, what strike to sell, when to sell and when not to sell. Those things, those choices also you need to learn and, and master before you can say, okay, you know, I can really sell put and still sleep with peace. So it comes with practice, it comes with experience, it comes with uh, real time trading as well. And also um, allocating capital very well. Okay, so those are the two things that SK mentioned. And I thought for the benefit of my viewers, I just would like to elaborate a little bit more about uh, those two strategies. So SK, do you trade full time? No, I don't really trade full times because it's really too taxing with kids around. Um, you are, you're going to imagine that whenever I get to sit down on my desk and my kids will come, pull me to sleep, pull me to bed, and yeah. then next day I have to work. So it is really, really very difficult to trade full time for me. But however, uh, after learning about myself through Option Pandit, actually from these causes, I begin to understand myself more. Yeah. I actually started to explore more things about what is the nature that works for me and what's the nature that doesn't work for me. In the past, I might have joined courses, but it is all about strategy and gates. However, after going through from 2018 to 2021, this journey is all about a learning strategy and gates, uh, a little bit of self-discovery. It's after when I started to get to Kang Sky and then we have discussed about trades markets and then he has shared with me about the courses that he has attended and I joined. I was, uh, I, I didn't hesitate when I joined because yeah, yeah. we are trading, we are, we are, we are, we are buddy for, for, for the years when we started the, the journey. I just take the leap of faith. I said, since it works for you, it, it should work for me as well. So I, I just joined without hesitation. And then next thing is that I joined with an open mind. Because mm. I open myself saying that I I really am not good. Because I have to admit to myself, if I'm good, then I, I, I'm really a millionaire, but I'm not good. I'm not good at it. So I need to know that I need to find someone that has been there and can guide me there. Because the person must have the experience and must have the experience not only in the trade markets, he must have the experience in the emotion uh, emotion handling because when you're going through the trades it's easy to open the trades but it's hard to follow through the emotions correct, correct. in fact that also shows up in our uh, one percent plan that we have done now one percent per week sounds very aggressive uh, from all the perspective but you know we have been doing it quite successfully recently and it's all about it boils down to uh, being very disciplined about it very disciplined on the trades uh, um, and having the data work in our favor and just use those backtesting to develop a strategy that's working out working out very well. Now, I would like to, uh, you know, get a little bit more insight on how you adjust the trade, not just how do you build a trade. So for the benefit of those uh, viewers who are watching this show, can you give us an idea? How do you go about selling a put? And then later on, how do you go about, you know, in, in building an iron condor? Okay. First of all, selling of puts, of course you must have, of course I must have a list of company that I really am confident about. Uh, just share with you some companies like Facebook, Microsoft, I think you know the big thing. Actually, selling puts in, in, in company in, is not hard rocket science. You just need to find strong fundamental company, which is boring, but it makes money. First of all, have them in your watch, in my watch list. Second of all, through the courses from Ocean Pandit, I also learned some strategies like MRB. And then this is a very good and powerful strategy in which something appears in that list, if it crosses and matches my 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 uh, watch list, and then I know that this company is is in for in for my uh, selling outputs. Because from this strategy I can actually sell a further strike away, and I know that I'm quite okay to get a sign. Because under the technical aspect, most likely you will not stay that long over the, the area for, for, for long for the strategy. Even if I get a sign, if I fail in a way that the MRB didn't rebound back as it is, even if, if I get a sign, 
I have the cash capital to secure the positions and which allows me to be in the market for a few months when it turns around, hey, it's still giving me a quite pretty decent uh, gains. So just have to ask yourself, what kind of company like Facebook, do you imagine that you will crash to 200 or even 150? Of course, there's risk assessment that must be done for the company. I cannot guarantee every company will be the same, just like business like Alibaba, it drops a lot. So one must be very familiar with the company fundamentally when you're selling the secure puts and understand the environment risk that we are having so that we can take away those that we, we think that right now, like you ask me to sell Alibaba sell put, I wouldn't do so because I wouldn't want to be assigned and get sleepless night. So these are the things that I have to ask myself, am I okay to get these stocks in my pocket for maybe as long as a year and then uh, to, to sell it? Or am I okay that if it is stagnant for one whole year and yet it's still in my portfolio? So if it is stagnant in my portfolio, what can I do next? So it's also another selling strategy called sell call. <laughs> so in both instances, I get to earn. And I was able to lower my um, cost of ownership to the, to, the, to the stocks. So what happens is that if the cost of ownership gets lowered significantly and I decided, hey, why not? I want back my capital, I don't want to be locked inside. I might decide to sell at a slight loss, but the overall thing is, is still gain because I got selling premiums from my puts, selling premiums from my call to get the gain. So what, wherever I do my selling as a business, I look as a whole unit itself. I don't only say, hey, I, I, I lose money on my stocks. No, that is not how I see it. I see it as selling of call and selling of puts together with the stocks yeah. as one business itself. So once this is generally generating net profit, then is it time to book my profit or is it time to just uh, continue to do, to hold on to the stocks to wait for yeah. capital appreciation? So this is one thing that uh, I have to be clear about. Second of all, this is how I structured my, uh, uh, this is how I structured my selling strategy. Yeah. Next thing is that, um, how do I structure my iron condos? <clears throat> okay, when I structure my iron condos, normally is that I will use um, SPX. My underlying will be SPX and RUT. Why? Because this tool doesn't tend to move a lot in the market. This is one thing that uh, is necessary for, for an iron condo because we are going to keep it between the range. Second of all, is that always have a structure system that is being learned and stick to the discipline of the structure system. Try not to change too much because um, I was exploring myself. I tried to, after listening to uh, some of the interviews, to, I try to replicate their traits. I try to replicate. However, it, it doesn't really work well for me because it is easy for them because of the emotion attached that they have already seasoned out and they know what to do. So I think what you brought up is, a, is an excellent point, which is, you know, you can follow seasoned traders. Like, for example, I'm asking you, so you might be seasoned trader for other people who are listening to you. So even if you give a specific trade and they want to copy that trade, it may still work out, but may not be long run because they don't have the seasoned experience that you may have. So what it tells to the viewers is that, you know, even if you listen to someone, even if somebody is giving a trade idea, you have to incorporate your due diligence. You have to incorporate your experience to see whether or not that will be a good fit for you. The other thing that I observe from your sharing, SK, is that you are taking care of the risk. So naturally, profits will flow. If you're taking care of what can move the market, what can affect your trades, what is the downside and what is the upside, if you make those plans together, then basically your trade plan is set. Like you mentioned about selling puts. If you are selling the companies on the you're selling puts on the companies that you are very, very comfortable. And then you have used an MRB strategy, which is a option bundle proprietary strategy. Use that strategy to bring it to the price level at the best time to get in. So when you combine that, and even though if it is if it does not work out, you're willing to hold on to that share. And if you're assigned, then you know that your game plan will be, okay, I can sell calls against it. I can keep it for some time. I can keep lowering my cost and I go into the profit I get out. So that's a mindset of using all the tools available at your disposal and then trying what works for you. Similarly on condos, 
choosing the strikes, explorations, etc. You know, there are dime a dozen. We can choose whatever we want. But ultimately, because it's narrow range or rather range bound, and if you don't manage the risk well, then that's where actually the risk comes in. So fantastic. Thank you for thank you for really sharing that. I think it's it's very insightful. Now, one of the strategy that I think viewers will easily understand is selling put. So could you give us an example, like uh, give, give maybe one or two companies that you admire uh, with the viewers, share, share with them and maybe construct a trade with okay. the disclaimer. Of course, they have to do their yeah, yeah. due diligence. Okay. First of all, my main holding inside my portfolio will actually be Palantir's and then will be like Tesla. So these are the two companies that I really like and then I don't mind I get assigned. Of course, doing Tesla selling puts right now requires uh, big capital. But then uh, because of the, in the past it is very volatile. So if you learn options before, you will know why it's volatility IV. You high IV actually you're selling out of the out of the strike puts will actually give you also quite a decent premiums. <clears throat> uh, like for Palantir's, this is a stock that I believe in long run for the growth. I, I will know that this is the price that I'm willing to hold. So based on the, sometimes I'm based on the moving averages as well. If you hit the moving averages like 50 uh, moving average or even 200 moving average, I will decide to sell put down there. So if I get a sign, I will just take the share and buy the share. And then I'll, sometimes I will also wait for a while because if I believe this company will grow, I'll wait for a certain time before I start selling call. First of all, is to miss out the total uh, gain of the of the of the capital gain. Second of all, I think I'm quite okay to wait for a while to decide to sell call. So these are the the play field that I do. Then um another another company that I actually sell puts is actually uh Facebook. I think all of you should know Facebook. So Facebook when it had bad news like the like whistleblowers recently, then the stock tank and then because of uh, these issues, I also take the opportunity and then I won't, uh, in the past I make some mistakes. The mistakes that I make is that I sell immediately when I see the reads. It's only after I started to realize, hey, pause a while, it may drop a little bit lower. Even sometimes when it is in the MRB list, it might still be in the MRB list the next day. So mm. not to not to be so uh, so ganjong in a way we say that, so uh so eager to jump in and uh, uh being excited and see it the thing is that keep calm see yes. for one two days sometimes it's good to see that if there's a, a, a sign of uh, rebounding then i can enter with more confidence that hey the selling of put will not get a sign so even if you get a sign i know that um it has passed a few days it has passed a few days of rates and maybe it will turn back around so because selling of puts, sometimes it's not, I sell today, I get assigned tomorrow. It's selling one month down, down the roads. I was trying to get the best premium out of the worst case scenarios of, uh, I would say bad case scenarios of the company. Yeah. yeah this is normally what I do. Uh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, SK. Now, one more question that I have is, you know, there are beginners as well as advanced intermediate traders all watching uh, this interview, could you share a little bit about, you know, what do you think, um, if you were restarting, what are the th things that you will pay attention to? What will be your suggestions or ideas to them, especially for beginners? And also for those who are still looking for improving their consistency. Okay, moving forward, I will say that uh, always have an open mind to start to explore on causes and seminars. Because the first thing that we have to invest, I have to invest is actually invest in myself. This whole journey will not be possible if I continue to be skeptical at like my 2008, refusing to pay for the value things that trainers that can offer. So if I have been more open, this is one thing that I have to, uh, I have to highlight, of course, be skeptical as well in a way that scrutinize the people that you're going to uh, give up your, your your saving to learn the knowledge. It's not everyone might be the, the gurus that is being claimed. The real hard work comes in 
how do you know that this person is the person that uh, that you are going to we are entrust I would say entrust to actually guide me first of all of course I didn't come into ocean party streets because I have someone like Sky who take who take the front from peers it's based on his experience I do my homework is based on his experience of sharing then I open up to to ocean party conferences I think SK this is really helpful but uh, but what I would also appreciate if you could share from a trading perspective the special trading as in like what are the things that they should take care of in their trading uh, so they stop losing and improve their consistency okay in the trading aspects I will share that take good care of the risk it is very important to take the risk seriously because from the causes one thing that might not have to share with me risk never sleep the risk will never sleep because no matter how good I am in my selling or post of trades I have to understand that my risk is the amount that I put in and this amount that I put in I must be sure that if I lose it away I'm okay risk, risk itself is to understand what is the amount that I can actually stomach for my losses that's why we have a cut loss criteria and be disciplined about the cut loss even ne never try to lie to oneself that hey, this thing is going to go back up this thing is going to back. this will actually kills a lot of traders and it actually kills me before uh never mind because it's a lead call you will go back up because it is a lead call i'll be there maybe after half a year it's still not there and it has happened to me before <laughs> so what are the things do you consider that they should focus on another thing i think they should focus on uh, is the management of the of the portfolio it is very important to manage your portfolio uh, a lot of people sometimes they find that um it happens to me before like 20 over 30 stocks hey this company is good facebook microsoft amazon google i want every piece apple i can name you 20 stocks straight away in my mind last time when i be, i haven't started investing i said what company to buy i have a lot of difficulty finding company but after i join there's too many companies you have McDonald's, you have Disney, you want any, I can name you any, I can name you up to 20 or 30, even 40 if you want to. Yeah. Can you have everything in your portfolio? Can you manage everything? Can I manage everything? Can you read every annual reports, 40 annual reports, break down to 12 months, how many annual reports you need to read per month? And the annual reports is not two, three pages, it's 100 pages, 200 pages. Uh, uh, are you able to digest? Am I able to digest? So all these things has to boil down. Trade within yeah. capacity. Trade within the ability of myself. If I if I do it in this everywhere, I'm almost everywhere in my portfolio. Then I'm actually nowhere. Yeah, I think I think these are these are all really some golden nuggets that my viewers can benefit, and. Um, um, uh, what I what I gather from this conversation is that techniques and mechanical part can be found easily. What strategy, what strike, what explorations, and etc. But your success is primarily driven by the mindset transformation, doing it by yourself and adopting your style to your lifestyle, seeing what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and then scaling it up by optimizing your portfolio as well. This is what really led to led to such a stellar performance that you know I've seen in your in your portfolio. I think this is this is really fantastic. Um, I would like to wrap it up here, SK. This is uh, this has been such a wonderful wonderful time. And for the viewers, if you're watching and if you benefited from it, make sure you post a comment. You um, if you have any question, feel free to ask the questions as well. I will request SK to stop by and uh, answer your questions. And if you would like to, um, you know, have a follow up conversations, anything that you would like to know more, please, please feel free to share those with us. And I hope you enjoyed this session together with us. It was really a pleasure having you SK and enjoying this conversation together with you. Thank you. Uh, with all that, I look forward to seeing you in my another Option Market Visual Show. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy, and trade carefully because risk never sleeps. Wish you all the very best. <laughs>